Okay, we're back, and no, turns out the microphone did not cut out, which I guess means that my headset may have died, so I will, I'll try to deal with that later. So we are back to the more subtle earbud. Now, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Um, yes, so, cinematography. There's not, critic, quote, there's nothing too tricky about Sushitsky's cinematography and spider. The photography does just enough to tell the story without drawing attention to itself. And that brings us to the editing. I guess I should just briefly. I, I want to make clear. It's it was the exact right choice by Sushitsky. Um This is less like some some of um Cronenberg films tend to be visually dramatic. Now it's not necessarily the cinematography, sometimes you know, he has a very naturalistic cinematography and a lot of just just very straightforward, but it's like effects and, and that kind of thing. There's very little of that here. And this is not a movie that should be like fancy and and so so it was the exact right choice. But yes, moving on to the editing, this was edited by Ronald Sanders, who has 33 credits as movie editor. Last worked in 2020, and let's see. So other than this, he did Maps to the Stars, Cosmopolis, Dangerous Method. Eastern Promises, A History of Violence, Existence Crash, M. Butterfly, Naked Lunch, Dead Ringers, The Fly, The Dead Zone Videodrome, and Scanners. Um, I forget, Fast Company, is that also? Anyway, so that's 14, 14 Cronenberg movies. So again, he definitely delivered for Cronenberg what Cronenberg wanted. And the editing... There's this really, a lot of the editing here is very sort of subtle and naturalistic, doesn't draw attention to itself kind of thing, and it lets a lot of scenes just sit, you know, it's the, the life of a, a schizophrenic living in a halfway house is not super exciting, so why should a movie about it be, you know, that's one of the things I think that you know, a beautiful mind gets wrong. I, I feel like that movie makes it much too exciting, you know, which is, you know, it's an, it's an Oscar movie. They, they knew that they were going to... Anyway, well, I suppose not all Oscar movies. Was it maybe that at the time an Oscar movie had to be exciting? I forget. Anyway, yes, um, this has this really, really, like... You know, today we maybe think of it more as a Christopher Nolan trait, but you know, yeah, you see it in in some Nolan, a number of Nolan movies. Uh, some of the best of it is in the um, the Prestige and Oppenheimer. You know, it's also in the the excellent movie Martha Marcy May Marlene, and it's also present here. It will cut between the present day. And, you know, Spider's present day and Spider's childhood completely smoothly. And it also goes very smoothly between things that, by, you know, logically, that's probably an accurate perception of reality we're seeing. And then these hallucinations, some of which you only realize after having watched the entire movie, oh, that was a hallucination, you know, and there's this really, really clever idea, I, I don't know who came up with it, but kudos, that they, they it, it's brilliant, it works incredibly well. Every so often, you'll see Spider trying to, re you know, a, a lot of the movies, him trying to reconstruct what did happen in his childhood kind of thing. And it's also, you know, it starts as this very innocent time that he's trying to, like, escape back to kind of thing. 
and the yeah then there's some stuff that's more like messed up and every so often it'll show Ray finds standing there or sitting there and yeah I think that's as much as I'm going to give away I'll just what I'll say is try to notice because sometimes he's just witness witnessing the the this childhood event and sometimes that changes that's that's what I'll that's what I'll say and yeah so this the the budget was 10 million dollars and the box office was 5.8 million you know like many of Cronenberg's movies I'm really glad none of these killed his career you know he's he had his share of box office failures and occasionally he actually did outright make a movie that just wasn't quite as as good as you you liked you know as as you feel like it could have been considering his talent and the the subject matter and that kind of thing but a lot of the time it's just his his movies are not crowd pleasers you know and and I really admire like he you know we're we're talking like he's so yeah, he very recently. Yeah, he's there's there's something called the Shroud, so that's in post production right now. He he did Crimes of the Future, which apparently I forget if was it was it that people predicted or was it that it actually happened. Apparently, like people walked out and like threw up because of how disgusting. And I I believe it. I one hundred. I haven't seen it. I'd like to. Yeah, one hundred percent. I I believe that that happened. Uh, let's see. Yeah, he was making shorts as far back as 1966. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 1969, 1970. That's around when he started making feature films. And, like, he's never just said, you know what? It's fun being an auteur. It's fun. I, I like doing all this. Tell you what. Why don't I just make a movie that just everyone loves? That, that everyone can sit down and just enjoy? You know, I really respect that. Like, so there's 47 credits. You know, some some of these are shorts and such, but that's a lot of time to to stand by. You know, making these very, you know, like they're not audience friendly movies. There, there, there's so many things he does in his movies that push away a mainstream audience. Because he knows that there's some things that are worth, you know, abandoning. Like, 100%. If he just said, if he one day just felt like, you know what, I'd like to make money, he could deliver. Like, some of the, some of the gory horror movies that he's made, he could easily have made them more appealing to, to mainstream audiences, you know, through, throughout the 80s, he made some extremely gory horror movies, and, like, I mean, he made The Fly, which is, like, such, such a gimme, like, if he just wanted to make money off that, he, it would have been like, okay, sure, you know, like, who doesn't think, like, if you are not fascinated by the idea of a human being becoming like a, a fly I I have I, I really struggle to believe that you're into sci-fi horror you know like and if you're not into sci-fi horror that's fine but if you're at all into sci-fi horror that's a that's that's a really re that's really high up there as one of the most fascinating because like bugs we all you know we all have them we all know them who needs them nobody wants to be well there's a certain subset. A lot of us, probably the majority of us, do not want to be bugs. You know, so the the and he turns it into this brilliant metaphor for cancer and the way that cancer changes your body. You know, like right there. Like so many people are like, okay, that's too far. That's not nope. I'm uncomfortable now. I'm not I it's nope, nope, nope. You know, and and I haven't watched. I'd like to. I, I know not to expect much of it. 
I I probably will if if I get a chance to. I don't currently have a copy. I'd like to watch the sequel. You know, so shoot me. As far as I understand, it's much more mainstream. It's much more. It's exactly the sequel is what peop what what the studio had hoped that Cronenberg would deliver with the first one. You know, just like. And it's also it's the kind of thing you don't need a big budget. You don't need like really gory effects to communicate that cancer is awful but it like it really hits the message home you know like cancer is a plot point in so many movies and a lot of the time it's just oh you know they went to the doctor they got the bad news later this character dies and it's like I feel like a lot of people have seen it so many times I don't know that me personally but I've actually you know I've lost people to cancer but a lot of people, it's probably just, eh, you know, cancer. What else is new? You can't say that about The Fly. Nobody watches The Fly and it's like, this Tuesday, am I right? No, that's not... It's impossible to just shake off. And it, it lives in your soul. I love that about Cronenberg. And, yeah. So, this was filmed on location... Uh, let's see, some in Toronto, some in uh, Berkshire, Berkshire, some in London, and uh, yeah, and they get great stuff out of the, the location shooting, like they, they really, I've been to London, and this really brought that back for me, you know, I, it's, I, I was in London when I was a child, you know, my parents insisted, and yeah, like it, it's, you know, watching this movie, you get a sense of what it's like to live in London, and yeah, just, I, you know, really, really just, you know, it doesn't make London look good. London is better, as at least as a tourist destination, I can't, you know, I've never lived there, but that's, you know, that's, that's what you get when you get when when Cronenberg goes location shooting. You know, it's not gonna be. Let's see. And so the uh, right, um, yeah. So the genres are drama, mystery, thriller. I think an argument could be made that at least parts of it are horror, but it's probably yeah. I think that's why it's called thriller. It's not quite. It doesn't go as far as horror movies usually do, but yeah, like. It's actually very, very tense and suspenseful. There's some scenes that get like a visceral reaction out of you. It doesn't feel exploitative. And, you know, yeah, like, you know, schizophrenia, it is a, and, and hallucinations, paranoia, taboo. And you could easily get a movie that's just like, oh, well, this is what. Ah, what's the word? Yeah, that's very exploitative. That just that tries to put you in the mindset, and then just use it in a cheap way, and that doesn't happen here. The music is handled by Howard Shore, uh, who let's see, yeah, he's composer for this. He has eighty-three credits as composer, and he, yeah, he worked as late as twenty twenty-two, and he composed for Crimes of the Future, 2022, not 19, possibly also 1970. I am going to get to that in a bit. But, yeah, again, for sure, they, they, are, they work well together. So, yeah, um, for Cronenberg, he did Crimes of the Future, Maps of the Stars, Cosmopolis, Dangerous Method, Eastern Promises, History of Violence, this... Uh, let's see. Existence, crash. Come on. Um, Naked lunch. Dead ringers. The fly. Video drum scanners and the brood. I lost count. Was that twenty or something? So yeah, a lot. Um, yeah. Most or all of the soundtrack is here on YouTube, free to listen to, so I did, I recommend you do so. It's, it's 36 minutes worth. 
haunting, eerie, creepy music and completely like it really like with with you know the cinematography like I mentioned that the the editing lets scenes sit. The cinematography uses like browns and beiges and Ray Fine's performance pretty much pushes the audience away. It's very difficult to get under, you know, he's, yeah. So the music is extremely important. The music is maybe the most expressive part of the, the, his personality and, and the hallucinations and such, you know, because a lot of the, a lot of his memories, hallucinations and, and such, you know, they form a tapestry, but individually they're not like, it's not like non-stop tension. Now, let's see the... Yeah, there's some really great um, sound design. I don't think I want to expand on that. I'll just say some of the, the stuff that's... Uh, yeah. So the pacing... I agree that this movie can be characterized as slow. I completely disagree with calling it boring. It is always fascinating. Like, it's not immediate, like, the plot takes a little while to, to get started, but, you know, before that, it's entirely about character, later, it's about both. And, let's see... Yeah, uh, credit quote. Be warned that this is a slow-paced movie featuring a main character who mumbles incomprehensibly. The movie re revolves around Spider's inability to deal with uh, normal things in normal ways. He doesn't connect to the world the way most do. And that can make this movie an immensely frustrating experience if you're not ready. And he says two hours, it's 94 minutes. Watching a man fail to connect to himself, his past, and other human beings, Cronenberg and Fines are brilliant at portraying this, but there's nothing wrong with really disliking it. Most people like main characters they can relate to on some level, doing things they can comprehend. Spider doesn't indulge. And, yeah, one person says, oh, it's not thrilling. Well, maybe not thrilling, but it is definitely disturbing. Like, I don't want to meet you in real life if you watched this and you didn't think any part of it was disturbing. But, but yeah, that's, again, like, it's... Yeah, you know, like, thriller, there's a lot of thrillers that are entirely unlike this. And maybe the main perception or expectation for thriller is very unlike this. Now, yes, yeah, so the movie is 91 minutes long without end credits, 94 long with them, and I definitely think it's it's worth it. Uh, you know, I've, I, I've seen some people say it feels much longer. I would probably say... It feels at least 40 minutes, maybe an hour longer than it is, you know, and it is like, you know, I think it's fine to afterwards, like, you know, watch something that's more upbeat and more fast paced, like, as long as you can still like analyze the movie, that's what I usually do, but yeah, you know, it, it for sure is a, a movie that is you know not not everybody is going to to like it and it definitely does feel a lot let's see I feel like I wrote down somewhere in my notes um, I guess maybe watch the first 40 minutes uh, you know and a lot of people will know that the movie is not for them within the first five or ten minutes and and that's fine you know like if the one thing I say is, please don't go online and leave a negative user review talking about how boring it is, just because it wasn't for you. You know, just say that it's slow. Slow and boring are not synonyms. And let's see. You know, you, you don't, I, like, I'm not really big on sports movies. You know, you don't see me going around, you know, reviewing a bunch of sports movies saying, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of sports in this movie, like, okay, we get it, sports. Like, I, I get being frustrated with, like, the, the, um, you know, it is, it is very unlike, 
the the if for you the name Cronenberg means scanners, the fly, you know, great, those are amazing movies. But this is not, this is a different, you know, Cronenberg. Now, let's see. Yeah, so, and, and yeah, I, I will admit, I'm, I'm very drawn to his more unusual, his, his post, like, yeah, starting in 2000, you know, his, this 20-year portion of his career, from 2002 to 2022, where he made all these movies that, like, I mean, if you didn't know, if you just knew that there was a Cronenberg who made a bunch of horror movies that have a lot of gore in the 80s, and then you tried to watch these, you know, this 20 years worth of movies, and you didn't, you know, and you saw the name Cronenberg, you'd probably be like, oh, he had a son, I guess, you know. He did, and apparently his son very much, like, Apple didn't fall far from the tree. I'd like to watch. I haven't, you know, I haven't been able to find copy yet. Um, I guess that's, I'll, I'll just real quick find his name is Brandon Cronenberg, and he directed... Holy oh, crap, I didn't know... Oh, oh, okay, yeah, some of these are music videos. I was going to be like, what? He directed Possessor and Infinity Pool. And both of them I've heard, like, they're divisive, but they're also really amazing if they're if it's for you. And, yeah, I'd really like to watch them. Um, they haven't come to theaters near me, and I haven't been able to find copies. Oh, and Antiviral in, in 2012. And then, like, what, four music videos, three shorts. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd very much like to to see his uh, his stuff. But, but yeah, you know, no, this was just, you know, Cronenberg wanted to do something different, uh, you know. And I'll grant that to some extent, you know, Naked Lunch is also very different from, you know, that one, not as much of a horror movie, really. That... Maybe that one was the first, like, big div uh, divergence, but that one still had a lot of really amazing special effects. This one has almost no special effects. You know, in that one, the special effects are bringing to life the, the, the hallucinations of the protagonist, where usually, well, sometimes that is what, anyway, it has less violence than the other ones, but it does have special effects, they're amazing. This one has almost no special effects. So yeah, um, the best element of this is probably how well it explores the idea, and seeing this very dressed down minimalist version of Cronenberg, like it's it's fascinating to compare this to like the the extremely, like, really over-the-top kind of stuff we get in, you know, when, when, yeah, when I think over-the-top Cronenberg, especially stuff like Videodrome and The Fly, like, it's it's wild how far those movies go. They, they really, yeah, they push it pretty hard, pretty far. Ah, this is the part where I'm supposed to pick the worst aspect. I, I do this to force myself to say at least one negative thing about movies that I love, so it's not non-stop gushing. Um, I mean, I guess, yeah, there are a couple of times where the, the child actor isn't completely amazing, but it's not a big deal. It's not that big a part of it. Like, almost all the time, when he's on screen, it really, really works. Like, his performance is incredible. Now, uh, let's see. So yeah, uh, when when I look at you know other reviews, you know something that a lot of people say is it's too slow. Already addressed that. Others say it's too simple, especially compared to Cronenberg's other works. I I get what they mean. Um, I think that you know, and and for sure, like it is definitely the kind of thing. Yeah, you know, if you. It could, you know, I could understand, you know, if you didn't know that he, you know, like, this is not like, it's not that everything he made after this was as simple as this. 
you know, some of the, the ones that he made after this much more complex. You know, so I, I think I think it really works for this movie. I don't think it would have worked if it was as complex as the others. You know, and yeah, I mean, on some level, this movie is a a puzzle that once you solve it, you know, you you mostly understand. Where a lot of Cronenberg's films, it is this like you. It's more of a labyrinth, you know, you're trying to desperately to find out, and you can watch the same movie over and over and over, uncover new aspects, and still struggle to piece together everything. Um, so yeah, before the first time I watched it, the thing I was most worried about, so yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. It's something, it's worth knowing before you go in, so you're not disappointed, but it's not a problem, in my opinion. Uh, the thing I was most worried about for the first time I watched the movie was that it would be too hard to follow, and it is definitely, you need to be ready for it, but once you are, and, and I will definitely say, I don't think you should feel bad if you watch the entire movie, and by the very end, you're still, like, you don't feel like you completely understood it, and you have to watch it multiple times, you know, this is one of those movies where once you know the ending, you might want to watch the entire movie again from the start. So, you know, now knowing this new piece of information, applying it to everything that you see, you know, I, th I think that makes a lot of sense. And I don't think it's a, a bad thing about it. And, yeah, um, before I first watched it, the thing I was most looking forward to was more Cronenberg. And, yeah, like, you know, some aspects of him. Are, are very much, it doesn't feel, see that's the thing, I don't like when people say this is watered down Cronenberg, or he sold out, or anything like that, because that really doesn't feel, that doesn't ring true to me at all. Uh, it, it more, like, he entered a new phase of his career, you know, it doesn't, like, he was still, he's still, you know, making these movies that are very, extreme and very unpleasant to watch for a lot of people so it's not you know like I'll, I'll grant there are some directors who eventually sell out you know I just don't think this is and I you know I can't see the future uh, I guess it's possible he will at some point I I don't think he will he doesn't strike me as a person who, who would but yeah um, that is, so yeah, uh, the trailer does give too much away, and it's the kind of thing where, like, the trailer really makes this movie look much faster and more, like, the, the trailer makes this look like one of the, the kind of psychological thrillers that were coming out around this time where, like, you're 